not sure how many of you guys have experienced this as well, but one of my biggest issues with taking classes is not when I don't get the material because that does happen, but when the teacher gives me either a dirty look or says something that's ridiculing or demeaning or diminishes me or doesn't even answer my question um, in a way that's actually helpful. If you've experienced something similar to this, please watch on. Hopefully this video can be of some use to you. Hey guys, I'm Magna Gopal and you're watching Empowered with Magna. Today I want to talk about empathy and teaching. I don't know how many of you have experienced the same thing where you've taken a class, you are doing your damned best to get the material, but you just can't. And if that's not frustrating enough, the teacher is calling you out and either saying something that is ridiculing you, uh, making fun of you, where the rest of the class is also laughing, but not in a way where you're laughing with them, but it really feels like it's at your expense. Um, I've personally had this experience myself. Uh, I remember taking a class in a different dance form, not salsa, and the teacher was explaining a bunch of uh, things in the class, and there was something that I couldn't get, I couldn't understand. I was watching him do something, but it wasn't lining up with what he was actually saying. So I had raised my question, uh, raised my hand to ask a question and instead of explaining it or telling me he didn't know or saying maybe let me think about it, he said just pay attention and you'll get it. I like to think that I'm a pretty good student, that I do pay attention. I do joke around and stuff but I am paying attention. I am trying to learn in that moment. I've invested my time, I've invested my money. So of course I'm going to try and get the most out of that moment. And what this teacher was breaking down wasn't lining up with what he was actually demonstrating. As a teacher myself, I could see that there was a discrepancy. Instead of just saying, you know, I didn't think about that or let me try it a different way, he berated me in front of the rest of the class. And I think there were, I want to say at least 50 students, possibly more. I'm not good with numbers in those um, classroom settings. And fortunately for him, I have a pretty thick skin, but I remember my friends in that class coming up to me and saying how rude that interaction was. That was my own personal interaction, of course. I remember another dance class, also not a salsa class, uh, where the teacher was verbally attacking some of the students, insulting their posture and saying, you call yourself a dancer, this is not what a dancer looks like. I had never been to this class before. I had no idea what the structure of this class is. I'm not sure if this is normal behavior and if this is what people are used to or if it's something that needs to be spoken out against. All I can tell you is I never went back to that class again because that's really not the style of teaching that I prefer personally. That was an attack in class. I don't know how that person dealt with it after, but I don't know that I would deal with it that well. Now, there are other situations as well where it's maybe a little bit less harmful. I remember taking a dance class in the city with a couple of my friends over a summer and we went every week or every other week or so and we got to become friends with the instructor and and he could tell that we had a good spirit about us that we weren't going to take things personally and that he could joke around with us so there were times that we were doing a movement and thinking we were doing something correctly but we were on the wrong foot and he would while he was instructing everyone else sit there and say other left other left other left, Magna, other left, and he would actually call me out and then I would realize, ah, oh, yeah, that's, that's me, that's my fault. But it was a very kind-spirited feedback. There was definitely no animosity or malintent behind the words that he was putting out there, even though he was criticizing me technically or correcting me in front of the rest of the class. Now, on a not-so-personal level, I've heard from way, way too many students about classes that they've taken and instructors that have made them feel like shit. And I think the responsibility partially lies with the student, but also lies with us, the instructors. Sure, on the student side, maybe you're in the wrong level. Maybe you are truly out of your place and you need more time to practice some of the basics or whatever was the prerequisites before you can actually be able to do that particular class. However, as a teacher, even if you notice this and there's a student in your class that's out of their level, out of their element, whatever, can't get the material, this is my personal approach to teaching, I don't think berating them and making them feel like shit in class is a good approach. The reason I say this is because oftentimes the things that we roll our eyes at, the things that we sit there and say 
guys, this is just a basic, or this is just a single spin, or this is just this or just that, is something that comes naturally to us, but it doesn't necessarily come naturally to our students. And especially when it comes to Congress workshops where I don't have these students on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis. These are people who are coming to take my class. Maybe this is their first class with me ever. I can't possibly expect them to feel as natural with my movement as I do. And to put that into perspective even, my movement that comes naturally to me when I first started dancing 20 years ago would not have been natural. I would have looked at all the things that I do now and just mind blown and wondered how the hell did she do that? I think as teachers, we really need to have empathy and patience towards our students. If we have a student who has been taking class and who's not getting something, and if we don't have that rapport, and this is really important too, there are some people that I have great rapport with, and with those people, I will joke around. But if I sense that they are getting sensitive or that they are actually taking personal offense, I'm going to cut out the jokes and be very respectful and very kind towards them. If there is no rapport, and this is a brand new student, someone I just met, who's taking my class for the first time or just started taking classes with me, I'm going to try my best to understand where they're coming from, appreciate that they are there to learn, that they've made at least that effort, taken that step to be there, to commit their time, their money, and their attention to me. And I'm not gonna take that for granted. And I'm gonna do my best to be kind and appreciative of that. There are always ways to speak to somebody in a group setting. Privately ask them, hey, do you know what level this class is? Um, have you taken this? What's your dance experience? This could be while well, everyone else is repeating the material that you asked them to do. Ask them directly, what are you struggling with? What is the hardest part about this? This goes back to my experience with that instructor who said, you know, just pay attention, you'll get it. I didn't get it based on the explanations that you've given so far. As a student, you repeating the same information to me that I did not get before is not going to help me. As a teacher, we need to be able to provide that same information in different ways. So if we find that there are some students in our class that are not getting something, then yeah, we need to adapt. I mean, it's our goal as teachers to make sure everyone understands what we're saying. And that means that our method, which might work excellently with a few people, a few students, maybe even 80% of the students in our classroom, does not mean that it's going to work with that 20%. And for that 20%, we need to adjust and we need to adapt and make sure that we can teach the same thing slightly differently. And this also applies to questions that we get in class. I always encourage questions in class, and most of the time people don't ask. But when someone actually asks a question, and it's not just, can you repeat that one more time, but ask a question about the technique or the methods or what am I doing or what, I'm, what muscles am I engaging, then those are moments that you, you really want to honor their courage for presenting themselves in class as saying they don't understand something. Acknowledge that effort and take the time to address that question properly. And if you don't know the answer, I cannot stress this enough. If you don't know the answer, just say you don't know. It doesn't mean we are less as teachers or that we are still not as great as we are at our craft. If we don't know something, it's something that we can understand, that we can learn ourselves as teachers and then eventually relay to our students. But it does not do anyone any good, especially the student nor ourselves, to deceive ourselves and say that we do know and come up with some nonsense answer. Now, as I mentioned before, there's also the other half of the equation, which is the students. And for my students who are out there taking classes where you feel super frustrated or where you are getting berated by the teacher, um, there are a couple of things that you also want to be thinking about when you're taking a class. One is, is the class to your level? And if it's not to your level, do you think you can keep up? Do you have that skill? Because some people do pick up material very quickly. Do you think you can go into an advanced class and pick that information up? Or if you're not at that level, then you can still take the class. I wouldn't discourage you from taking the class, but don't also place yourself right at the front where not only the teacher has you within their focus and their sights, but so does everyone behind you. There are classes that I've taken in other dance forms where, yeah, I might start 
in the front, I might feel like, oh yeah, I got this, I got this. I'm gonna start in the front because I'm one of those keener students. I might start in the front, not quite get it, and then let's say it starts to get more and more complicated. Maybe there are more things getting added to the choreography and I'm not picking it up. Well, if I realize that I've kind of maxed out on my own limit of absorption, then I'll make my way to the back. Yes, I have a right to stand where the hell I want to stand because I paid my money and I spent my time just like everyone else. But at the same time, I don't want to negatively affect the rest of the class. And if you are getting everything, but there are certain things that you're struggling with and you want to ask a question to get further clarification, then make sure you're not translating that frustration into attitude when you ask. Because that happens as well. Sometimes there are students in class that are like, well, that doesn't make sense. How are you doing this? You might not be getting it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't itself make sense. And when you come with that attitude, sometimes, yeah, you might get pushback from certain teachers or they might not be that inclined to answer you. Our goal as students is to grow and to learn as much as possible. And a part of that is choosing our environments properly making sure we're taking classes that are at our level or just a little beyond, but not something that's so extreme that we have to jump hurdles to understand it and that we're just gonna be constantly frustrated. That doesn't help our growth. It's also our responsibility to ask questions in those classes so that we can try to understand the things that we are not understanding. And if it's a class, maybe it's the only class that's happening in your neighborhood. Maybe you're in a small town and this is the only teacher and their approach is not something that resonates with you or there's something that they said that you didn't like, but you still wanna take class because you still wanna learn and there's nowhere else for you to go. In those cases, be kind and respectful and speak to the teacher after class and let them know how you feel. And if this is a good teacher who actually cares about your learning and cares about you as a person, they will adjust their methods and make sure that they can take care of you in future classes. As for the teachers, we've had those experiences where someone was yelling at us or ridiculing us. And if you didn't like that experience, which I definitely didn't, try not to put that upon your students either. Let's be a little empathetic as teachers. Let's have patience with our students and understand that what comes naturally to us after 20 years of practice is obviously not going to come naturally to them after just a couple of months or a couple of years of dancing. The kinder that we can be to them and the more nurturing we can be to them, to their growth, the more likely we're going to have these students for a long time and the more likely they're going to grow in more ways than just their technical skills on the dance floor. So here's to creating positive learning environment, whether we are the teachers leading that environment or whether we are the students embracing that environment. It is everyone's responsibility to treat each other kindly, to be patient with ourselves or with the other people in our class and to have some empathy when it comes to dealing with other people because that's the only way that we're all going to have a community that is nurturing and that's gonna help us all grow and allow us all to enjoy this dance to the fullest. What are your experiences with classroom settings where the teacher is a little bit harsh? Have you ever been treated that way yourself? As a teacher, how do you feel when there are students who might be a little bit disrespectful in the way that they ask questions or where it's clear that they're not getting that material? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you like this video, please support the channel by clicking subscribe and click on the bell icon to be reminded of future video releases. And if there are any topics that you would like me to cover, leave them in the comments or send me a message on any of my social media platforms. I look forward to hearing from you guys and talk to you soon.